Hi, I'm Pastor Edwin, and welcome to this new life. Today, I'm going to share to you about not losing heart. So oftentimes, we experience uh, discouragement in life, and there are so many factors that uh, contribute to these discouragements. And so I want you to listen and uh, watch this uh, message so that uh, you will see what are the things that are, that are uh, uh, bringing you into discouragement, and you can, you can do about it. And so enjoy this message. God bless you. We are part of a big picture. Can you say amen to that? The Lord has just planted you into this house because your calling, your vision, your personal calling and vision is connected and wired to a bigger vision and into a house. And that's why you are planted here. And that's why you are, you are part of this uh, of this congregation and there are some other local congregation who are uh, being used by the Lord and we we praise God for that but but even then other local congregation is part of the body of Christ and all of us together we're making a difference can you say amen to that and what the, one thing that you need to understand is that being part of the church is something that is not only beneficial for you and the Bible says that if you are planted in the house of God, okay, you will flourish. You will prosper. You will be discipled. You, you will grow and you will learn a lot. You will learn your purpose and somebody will be praying for you. And one another powerful thing about being part of the church and being part of the vision of this house. Because all of us together, we are what? making a difference. I will give you a, a very good example because being part of the church, of this house, okay, your reach is beyond your personal level. Let me ask your name. What's your name again? Lester. Lester. Lester, you've been attending the church? Yeah. Okay. Lester. Can you stand up, Lester? I, just, I will not embarrass you, but say hi to Lester. Okay, Lester, thank you very much. Lester went to Nepal. And Lester helped the community in that area where the devastation of the earthquake happened. Lester went to this mountainous area in Nepal and brought those housing materials for those people. Lester went to Tacloban and feed five to 6,000 kids every single day. Lester went there. Lester went to Hinunangan because we have a New Life Christian Center in Hinunangan. Lester went to the mountainous area of Mindanao where there is a ministry of ministering to the rebels and to the Muslims. Lester went there. Lester is part of the great harvest that we are doing for the young people. He went there. And probably Lester was shocked. Did I went there? No. You're part of the church. You're part of the body. If I say body, this body literally... Alam naman, my, my feet is not part of the body. If I'll go somewhere, the whole body will go there. Can you say amen to that? And Jesus said, you are the body. So I'm just telling you right now how big and how great is your influence if you are part of the body. Maybe Lester never went to Nepal and will never go to Nepal. But because he's part of the body and the name is the church. So whatever we do here, you are part of it. Can you say amen to that? You're part of what we're building. You're part of a generation that we are reaching out. You're part of, 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 of reaching out the loss. You're part of uh, those people who are going to the jail. We have a prison ministry. We, you're part of what we're doing with the outreaches. And you're part, what, how, how am I being part of this? You're giving. 
your prayer, being here, adding to the supply, your believing, and your agreement with us. And so we are all together. We are making a difference. Can you say amen to that? Can you clap unto the Lord before, before everybody here? And, and touch somebody and say, you're part of the body. Probably, you, you are mistaken by thinking that it's only the pastors and the missionary that was sent. No, there are sender and there are people who are here, who are praying. There are people who are going because that's their part of the body to go. But there are people who are giving because that's part of their body to support. Praying. That's powerful about being part of the church. Because you're rich. Your extension, your influence is not only, it's not only limited to what you can do and what you can, you can reach. It's, it's beyond. If you are part of the house of God, whatever this house is doing, you can say, I'm part of it. Can you say amen to that? Another powerful thing about being part of the church is this. When Jesus will talk to you, he will say, thank you. You have visited me. Thank you. You have fed me. Thank you. You have prayed for me. Thank you. You have given me clothing. And you will say, Lord, where, did I, where, where is the place that I visited you and give you food and give you clothing? Matthew chapter 25. Read that in your, in your home. Matthew chapter 25. And Jesus said, whatever you do to these little things, to these little people, you will do it unto me. And this house is committed to serve and to be a part of what we are going to do in blessing other people. So, I, I really wanted to encourage you today to say that you are part of the body. That you are part of what God is doing in this house. And probably you never realized that your faithfulness and your commitment in this house... And you are not complaining even though there is no parking. Uh -huh. Amen. Nobody complains in this house about parking. Okay? Or it's raining and no umbrellas. And... No, 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 no. Your commitment. And let me just thank you for your commitment. Let me just say, we appreciate you so much of your faithfulness. And let me just encourage you today. Galatians. Chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, say in due season. In due season, and you have a due season. You have. You, if not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, next week. We just don't know. But you have a due season. You will not, God will not keep you waiting for your season. You have a due season. And your planting and your sowing is not wasted. And if, if I say sowing and, re, and, 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 and planting is not just sowing money, sowing seeds, but sowing faithfulness, even though nobody is looking at you, sowing this uh, attitude of love and Attitude of faithfulness and commitment. And however small or menial it is, you have a due season. In due season, we shall reap if we are not discouraged. The word loose in heart means if you are not discouraged. And I would like to encourage you, and some of you probably came in here so discouraged. But let me just tell you, Whatever is the source of your discouragement cannot be compared to the grace of God in your life. Can you say amen to that? 
whatever it is. Come on, you can give a clap offering to the Lord if you want. But whatever is the source of your pain, whatever is the source of your suffering, Romans chapter 8, Paul said, this cannot be compared to the glory of God that was revealed in me. I cannot compare that, go that goodness of God, that, that joy of the Lord in my life, and what the Lord has done and His faithfulness. So, if you are discouraged, somehow it seems like you're losing your passion for the kingdom of God. You're losing your passion for the ministry. You're even losing your passion about your life. Let me just tell you right now. God is restoring that passion in your hearts. And before the end of this service, I do believe that the Holy Spirit is restoring the joy that started when you have encountered Him in your life. Amen? Therefore, as we have opportunity, say opportunity, and God will give you all opportunity in life. Not just opportunity to be a blessing, but opportunity to bless other people. Every single day, God is giving you the opportunity not to be selfish, to smile, to give love, to sow seed of faithfulness, and to sow seed of kindness. Every single day, God is giving you opportunity to be part of what He is doing. Every single day, God is giving you opportunity so that, you know why? Because God is thinking of your future. God is considering your future. And the more you sow, you sow seeds and the more you plant seed, you are just securing the harvest of your future. Can you say amen to that? Sometimes we don't realize that what we are doing right now will come back to us. What we're doing right now will come back to us. If what you're doing is to be kind to other people, that kindness will come back to you a hundredfold. If you are, and, and some people are looking for love. I want somebody to love me, to understand me. Well, God will send people to love you and to understand you. But let me just, let me just tell you right now that if you want kindness and you want forgiveness, the best way to multiply that kindness and forgiveness is to plant a seed of kindness and forgiveness. That's the system of the kingdom of God. Because whatever you plant, that you are going to harvest. Can you say amen to that? You look for faithfulness, be faithful. You look for love, love somebody. In fact, the greatest joy in life is not to be loved, but to love. And to forgive. And to understand. And to release. But Pastor Edwin, you cannot, you will, you don't understand what I'm, 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 I'm experiencing with my husband. Well, I don't understand probably. I don't know what's the situation. But one thing I know, the system of the kingdom of God is working. And it will not diminish the power of the system of the kingdom of God to a situation that probably I don't know right now. And so I tell you, whatever you sow, so if you have the opportunity to sow and to do good, you have the opportunity. The Holy Spirit will actually, and a lot of opportunities are coming in in our life, but be led by the Spirit of God. That's why we're not trying to pressure you to do something that is not led by the Spirit of God to you. Listen to the Holy Spirit, and God will probably give us you know, the responsibility to present to you opportunities for the kingdom of God. Let us do good to all. Especially, say especially. That means to God, the household of God is important. That means to God, His family is important. As what Pastor Paul is mentioning last Sunday, there are some teaching that says that Jesus will go to the streets and to the poor and, and to, the, to the destitutes, and, and that's the number one priority of, of the Lord. But let me just tell you right now, Jesus loves the church. Not the building, but you. 
and you are special to Him. And so therefore, God said, you know, not only that you are supposed to receive blessing, but at the same time, be a blessing to other people. So, especially to those who are household of faith. And some of you here probably are part of this house for many years, and you have been supplying to the body of Christ, to the body of this church. And thank you for that. But God will continue to guide you and lead you to a higher level. Maybe more than just attending the service, God is giving you this unction to join a ministry in this house. Maybe, maybe what God is asking you and you know, to, to go further for your relationship in this house is that you're opening up your house for a life group, being a, a, somebody that will lead care group or, or ministering. Maybe, maybe joining the choir. I don't know. Whatever it is that the Lord has just impressed unto you, be faithful unto Him. Do not lose heart, says. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, say mercy. You know, the mercy of God is new every morning. Every single day as you wake up, fresh mercy, new mercy is coming in. Can you say amen to that? You know, if, if as, you, as you lie down, as you sleep at night and, and you see some discouragement, some failures, some disappointment, but you can always trust the Lord, well, God, I just, I just commit my life unto you because tomorrow will be a new day and a new mercy is available for me. Can you say amen to that? So therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Don't be discouraged. Don't let that passion fade. And sometimes, you know, so many things are happening in life. And I will give you uh, some reason why we encounter discouragement in life. And probably it's a good thing to identify what are the source of discouragement and losing heart so that I can make adjustment in my everyday life. Can you say amen to that? I'll give you some points. I will not tell you how many points because I might not finish my points. But, you know, there are few things that you need to understand why discouragement is happening in your life and in your ministry and in your calling and in your purpose unto the Lord. Okay? Let, let me just give you number one. Number one. Discouragement or you will lose your heart for God if, number one, you don't have a personal encounter with Him. And that's very, very important. Because a person who doesn't have a personal encounter with the Lord will never understand His purpose in life. Are you with me? A personal encounter, I mean... You should have a relationship with Him that is alive. Not only that you're attending the church because your parents are attending this church, or you're attending the church because it's just the church every Sunday. It's part of the, of the schedule, so we go to the church, and that's why I'm here. No, everything that you do will radiate from what you have experienced personally with the Lord. And this is what God is actually doing and have done in our lives. You know, we, we've been through a life. Uh, I came from a broken family with no, with no future. I cannot even understand uh, where is my parents and who is my father and, and all of these issues of dysfunctional family. And I'm asking God, what is my purpose and why I am existing right now and why I was born into this kind of family. And then God said, well, I will give you explanation, and then there's a personal encounter with him. And I came to know the Lord, and I realized that although I don't know my father and who is, who is my parents, I have a father in heaven, and he is the best father that I have. Can you say amen to that? That although I don't know what's the uh, situation of my family, well, I have a family a family in heaven and on earth 
Well, when I attended the church, suddenly I realized, oh, meron palang, there are people that are really genuine in terms of the relationship and their love and their prayer to you. I, I realized that, that, that there is a group of people that are not fake, that they are not trying to abuse you, use you, or, or try to put you down. There are people that can help you genuinely, and that's the church. Although this group of people during the time that this family of God that I have encountered and I was connected at first is, is a group of people who are just gathering together in a small garage under a mango tree with 20 people. But you can sense their passion in serving God. You can sense the genuineness of their love to you. You can sense their prayer and concern to you that it's not fake, it's not plastic, but they're there just for you and no string attached, no string attached. They're just there to pray for you. And I realized, wow, I never, I never think that there will be a people like this and, and they're here. Praise God. Can you say amen to that? That's the church. A personal encounter is very, very important. And if you have a personal encounter together with other people who have a personal encounter and all of you together sharing together that encounter, that's a, that's a most magnificent relationship and fellowship that you have. Acts chapter 9, a very good example. A man by the name of Saul or Saul, Saul was trying to persecute Christians. He doesn't know the purpose of life. And suddenly, the Lord knocked him out. Suddenly, there is this experience of, uh, of encounter with the Lord Jesus. And you know, in this verse, uh, he fell on the ground and he heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, he trembling and astonished, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? There are, there are two most important questions that you should, you should uh, ask or make a question in life. Number one question, who are you, Lord? Number two question, what do you want me to do, Lord? In life? That is the most important important question that you need to have and you need to ask before you can experience the purpose of God. Number one, Anayon, who are you, Lord? Know Him, to know Him more, to experience Him more. Number two, what do you want me to do? From that time on, the guy who is persecuting Christians, became the greatest apostle of our time to the point that his passion to know God more and more became the point of reference as a word of God for us today. The book of Romans, the book of Galatians and Corinthians, and it explains there who Jesus is and the revelation of grace and the love of God in your life. He started with a question, who are you, Lord? And he started with a question, what do you want me to do? And started churches all over Asia that started Gentile churches all over Asia during the first century. And that's the reason why there are Gentile Christians. And that's the reason why you are here today. Can you say amen to that? It all started from Damascus experience and asking two important questions. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do in life? You lose passion in life if you don't know your purpose. And so it's important to have a personal encounter with Him. And if you are attending this church and you don't have any personal encounter with the Lord, you need to have one. I hope you don't experience being kicked out or being knocked out from that situation that you are in. Don't wait for being knocked out. Just open your heart 
and receive Him because He's waiting for you. Can you say amen to that? So that's number one. Number two, we lose passion and we have discouragement. We encounter discouragement because we always listen to the voice of discouragement. The voice of discouragement. Don't you know that discouragement is a spirit? Yeah. Amen. Discouragement is a spirit. And those people who are trying to discourage you are influenced by the spirit of discouragement. So you don't have to fight against flesh and blood and try to, try to put down that person. He's just influenced by that spirit of discouragement. So what you need to do is to strengthen. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 3, chapter 30, experience of David in verse 6 to 7. The background of this verse is that, you know, the family of the uh, army of David was into captivity. And they are so discouraged. Very, very discouraged. It says, now David was greatly distressed or discouraged. For the people spoke of stoning him. A king is about to be stoned by his army. Because of the soul of all people who uh, was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David what? Strengthened himself in the Lord his God. To avoid and to come against any form of discouragement, your, your encouragement is not coming from the people around you. And oftentimes, discouragement actually is coming from the people around you. So you have to receive encouragement from the Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So whatever is your, this, your, 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 your situation right now, there are some people who are trying to stone you like David. He's about to be stoned by his army. The people, the very people that he is serving with. And sometimes, you know, the people that will hurt you the most are the people that you expect you, that they will love you. Or your loved ones. And you know, sometimes you don't have to, you don't have to listen to that voice of discouragement, but you have to speak and say, no, I will make a choice that maybe and probably and, you know, situations are not good with them. So I will just encourage myself. I will just refresh myself before the Lord. You know, the secret of Overcoming discouragement is to encourage yourself. Can you say amen to that? Discouragement means taking out the courage to live. Encouragement, encouragement says, means that you are adding courage to this life. So instead of asking courage from other people, you yourself encourage yourself before the Lord. Can you say amen to that? You know why? Because there are some people who are looking at you. That if you are discouraged and you are down, they will also be affected. So it's important that you rise up and look at yourself and say, Lord, I would like to ask for courage and strength that comes from you. Can you say amen? Do not listen to the voice of discouragement. Make a decision. Sometimes the decision to rise up will only come from you. And you have to make a decision to rise up. And you know, as uh, David strengthened himself in the Lord, then David said to Abiatar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abiatar brought the ephod to David. That means he, he, he not only encouraged himself, but he went to a place where he will make an intercession and ask what is the will of the Lord in my situation right now. Instead of trying to question God, why I am experiencing this problem, it's important that you need to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do with this situation? Can you say amen to that? Because you are not there just to complain. You're there to overcome. God will give you wisdom on what to do. So instead to complain or instead of complaining, you just ask the Lord for wisdom, what you need to do in your situation. Amen? Now listen to the voice of discouragement. Number three. 
source of discouragement. And sometimes we are experiencing this because we are overwhelmed with great challenges in life and we always give in to fear. Challenges of life are always there. And sometimes you will just ask, why is this happening to me? But you have to realize God is good and the devil is bad. Very foundational doctrine that you need to believe. God is and the devil is. John chapter 10, verse 10. The enemy comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life. That's a very foundational verse in life. So, why bad things happen happens to good people? Well, number one, there is an enemy. Number two, life is unfair. Are you with me? You are living in a fragile, sinful world. And there are things that you are going to face in life. And, and if you are going to make a decision to stand up and believe and use your faith, because that's the only weapon that you can only use against any form of fear or any attack of the enemy, then you have to use your faith. Can you say amen to that? And by the way, what's the use of faith if you don't have any challenges? What's the use of faith if you don't have any challenges in life? Faith will not be there if you are in heaven. Reason for that, because that's a perfect world. But right now, the reason why God is giving you faith, He is the author and the finisher of your faith, then you have to use your faith. And you know what? There's, there's something about experiencing challenges that if you use your faith, if you make a decision to stand up, and, and believe on the promises of God that you will learn beyond just listening to a preaching and shouting preacher just like now to you. There's something that, that you learn in life that if you go through the valley of the shadow of death and you, are, you don't fear any evil, there's something about getting out from this experience that will make you wiser, that will make you stronger, that will make you mature, and that will open your, 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 your thinking about life. Can you say amen to that? So don't be afraid of any challenges. Sometimes these challenges in life overwhelms us to the point that we are weakened. We are we are uh, almost there. There's no strength anymore to go on. You know what? That's the reason why we have a family. And that's what Pastor Asora Milet is uh, sharing a while ago. Come to church. Come every Sunday. If you're so discouraged and you're so weak that you don't have any strength anymore to worship the Lord, come here. Join us. If you cannot lift up your hand, we will lift our hands for you. Remember Moses, he was praying before God for the victory of Israel. And there was a point that he was so tired to lift up his hand. And so Joshua and Aaron helped him to lift up the hand so that he can, all, he can still praise the Lord in the middle of the battle. There are times that you need Aaron and Joshua. Or, okay, anyway, whoever is that person, forgot it. But there are some people who are ready and committed that if you are tired, we will fight for you. That if you are discouraged, that you, if, you are, if, you, if you are about to give up, don't give up yet. Don't quit. We will not quit for you. We will help you. We will believe for miracle. We will believe for, for the supernatural. We will believe for God's intervention 
to your situation. And that is the power of being part of the house of God who are gathering together because there's a supernatural uh, working if we are going to believe and, 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 and pray for one another. Can you say amen? There is power in agreement. That's why we, we're here together. So don't be overwhelmed with challenges in life. Don't be alone, by the way. That's what Pastor Paul is mentioning. You know, those animals in geographic, national geographics or, you know, animal planet. The, the best person or the best uh, animal to be a lunch or dinner is those animals who are scattered and, and taken away from the group. The more that you are isolated, you are you're already a lunch for the enemy. Yeah? So don't be alone. Don't be alone. The Lord loves you so much that you are spending your time alone. He wants you to be connected to a family who can pray for you and who can disciple you, who can give you encouragement, who can say to you, there's hope in life. Who can say to you, come on, let's do it. Let's, we can make this and we can go on for this. Can you say amen to that? That's the reason why I have ministries. It's crossroads. Jubi from, from birth to grave. Sabi nga nila. We're here for you. We have children's ministry. We have youth ministry. We have adult ministry. We have men's breakfast. We have victorious women. We have every ministries that can supply. We have Jubilant, the senior citizen. We have the widows who can go to die. You know, I don't know who did that. But, you know. But let, let me just tell you this. It's fun to be part of the house of God. Can you say amen to that? Come on, let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 to 4. This is the heart of God to you if you are fighting a battle. Because battle will always be in life. When you go out to fight your battle, your enemies, and you face horses in the New Living Translation, and you face horses and chariots and army greater than your own, do not be afraid. Today, I'm prophetically declaring this to somebody, to someone here. You're facing some, some impossible battles in life. But let me just tell you right now, do not be afraid. The Lord God who brought you out from the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage, from, from, the, from the place where you are hopeless, okay? He says, the Lord that, who brought you out of the land of Egypt will be with you. He's, he's with you. And when you prepare for battle, the priests must come forward to speak to the troops. That's why I'm here shouting at you right now. And telling you, do not be afraid. Listen to me, all men of Israel. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart and panic and tremble before them. For the Lord your God is going with you in your battle. And he will fight for you against your enemies. And he will give you what? Say victory. Can you, can you say amen to that? Come on. Hallelujah. He will give you victory over your situation. So I'm here. Do not be afraid. Don't lose heart. Jesus is fighting for you. You have won the battle actually. Can you say amen to that? Your battle is over because of that cross. So stand up and rise up. And do not give in to fear. The reason why fear is coming in, and by the way, fear is a cousin, the cousin of discouragement, okay? That if you give in to, to fear, the reason why fear is coming in is for you to be weakened so that you will not fight. So that you will not stand up. So that boldness will, 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 will be taken away from you. Because your boldness in believing will defeat whatever the enemy is doing in your life. You have to be bold. And sometimes you have to fight. Afraid, but bold. Meron bang ganon? Yes. There are times. I'm sure when Peter is getting out of the boat, he's uh, afraid that he will sink. 
But you know what? You have to get out of the place where God is leading you and fight for that battle because God will give you victory. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. If you are overwhelmed with great challenges, don't give in to fear. Number four. Discouragement is coming in because we are swayed by what is happening in the land. And it's almost the same as number three that says you're giving in to fear. But this time, there are so many stories and rumors and, and, and news what's happening in the land today. And sometimes you are swayed into this and, and sometimes you, you, are, you are retreating because you know, finances are going down or, or ISIS is moving, you know, or, or the bank or anything that is, that is like so serious. The big one is happening. Oh my God. So let's have a, you know, a earthquake drill and all of these rumors and stories of bad news and, and this doom and, and gloom and doom and gloom news that, that we call the, the, the night news. The night news, huh? Sometimes we're watching the news and it's all gloom and doom and, and all of those negative. Uh, or kaya yung morning news. You get up in the morning and your devotion is the, is the news in the morning. And suddenly you see somebody is dead. Somebody is cut off the head. Somebody is, oh my God. A lot of happening in the land. And sometimes it's eating up your passion. It's eating up your your, your, your courage. Don't give in to that. Don't be swayed into that. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 46, in the New Living Translation. And I would like to speak this to those businessmen who are here. And probably you are facing some issues in your life and in your, in your business. But Jeremiah chapter um, 51, verse 46, it says that do not panic. Say, do not panic. If your business is crumbling down, do not panic. Do not be afraid. When you hear the first rumors of approaching forces in the land, for rumors will keep coming year by year. Violence will erupt in the land as leaders fight against each other. Do not panic. Matthew chapter 24, that's part of the, that's part of the, uh, the warning of the Lord, you know, the world is getting darker and darker. Earthquakes are going to happen. Wars are going to happen. Spratlis will be taken away. Oh my God, no, no, no. So all of those news, do not panic. God is in control. God is on the throne and he knows what's happening. Can you say amen to that? Just trust the Lord. And you know what? There are things, that's what Pastor Paul has mentioned, there are things that will happen and you cannot stop them. They will happen. You can only prepare for them. And so you have to prepare. And how to prepare? Not preparing panic or no, be afraid, no. You have to be prepared through the wisdom of God. Probably in your finances, there are things that you need to settle down, things that needed to be adjusted, in your business, and God will give you wisdom. If you lack wisdom, the Bible says that you ask wisdom from the Lord and He will give you liberally. But sometimes God will give you warnings and sometimes these warnings are, are warnings that will tell you, okay, you have to do this, make some decision on this, uh, make some uh, fixing on this area, and you have to do this. Why? Because God is warning you to prepare because something will happen in the coming years or days to come. When God said to Joseph, well, when God showed a dream to Joseph, and this dream is to prepare fat cows and skinny cows. And God said to, to, they, to, um, to Joseph that he has to prepare. So that's, you know, they're saying in the Philippines, prosperity is happening here where it's good, but at the same time, in the middle of prosperity, do some saving. Amen. So don't be swayed by the fear of the land. Okay? And number five. I'm almost done. 
Uh, praise God, I'm done, okay? Number five, discouragement is happening because sometimes, I know this is not all the times for you, sometimes you are too busy for the kingdom and you don't have any time for the king. We tend to connect the things that we are doing for the kingdom as part of our personal experience with the presence of God. And sometimes, you know, it's good. Sometimes you're, what you're doing is for the kingdom of God. What you're doing is for, for the church or for your family or for your children. That's good. But let me just tell you, your strength comes from the place where you are experiencing the goodness of the Lord. So if you are too busy to pray, you are too busy. Are you with me? No, I'm not trying to put you into a works, but I just would like to say to you that your life comes from the time of spending with the Lord so that you can do the works of the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter 2. Look at this. It's one of the messages of the Lord to the church of Ephesus. I know all things, the things that you do. I have seen your work, hard work, and your patience, or patient endurance. I know that you don't tolerate evil people. And you have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered that they are liars. You patiently suffered for me without quitting. Talking about being committed to the house of God. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me anymore. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. What God is saying is that your passion for God was replaced for your passion to what you are doing. Your pursuit for God was replaced by being busy for the kingdom of God. And we tend to have this experience of starting to, like, be tired. You know why? Because you are being drained. Your strength comes from your enjoyment to the presence of the Lord. In Luke chapter 10, a very good example of a two sisters, verse 38. Now it had happened as they went and he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So he worshipped and received the word of Jesus. But Martha was so distracted with much serving, say much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Talking about being discouraged of serving the Lord Jesus because nobody is helping, helping her. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are so worried and troubled about many things. And that's our problem. People are so worried about the things that you need to do and work and do and work and do and work but you're forgetting that your strength comes from the presence of the Lord. Many things. And it says here, but one thing, say one thing. One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that one thing, that good part, that one thing. And what is that? That is spending time with the Lord. And it will not be taken away from her. And so, you're experiencing discouragement because your time and your, your devotion and your personal worship unto the Lord is affected. And it was replaced with so many things in life. Probably you have to check, why my fire and my passion is not there anymore? Probably your time with the Lord is not there anymore. May you say amen? Discouragement will come in at the time that you are not preparing, actually. 
in your spending with the Lord, like right now, right now, you are here receiving from the Lord. What, you know what you're doing? You are actually preparing for any eventuality that will happen in your life. If the attack of the devil will come in, at least you're here because you're prepared, you're receiving things from the Lord, and you're receiving uh, strength from the Lord, so that when the enemy will attack, you know what to do. But if you are so busy, not spending, not spending the presence into the presence of God and not receiving from the Lord, if the enemy will attack, you don't have, don't have any tool to fight back. So it's important to always prepare and and to be in the presence of God is to always prepare for the battle. One thing that is very, very interesting with the ministry of Jesus, they are always looking for Jesus. And they will always find him in an isolated place and praying and praying and praying. And after that, he will go to minister to the people. Not minister and then pray. No, the other way around. He prays first and spends his time for the Father before he can minister to other people. Just the same thing. Before we can be a blessing to other people, we should be spending time before the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Before you can have strength to face challenges in your situation, you should have a strength. I mean, you should, you should be receiving strength from the Lord. Discouragement. The Lord doesn't want you to be discouraged in life. Let me just tell you this also. Of all the things that you have committed unto the Lord. All the things that you have done for the kingdom of God. I just have this unction to say unto you, in behalf of Jesus, in your faithfulness, into the kingdom of God, thank you. God will never forget what you are doing for the kingdom of God. God will never forget your commitment Whenever there is an opportunity to serve, to help, to be a blessing, you are just there, ready to respond. Let me just say thank you. And let me just read this verse for you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work. It's not unjust to forget your work and the labor of love which you have shown towards His name. In that you have ministered to the saints. And until now, you're doing ministering. God will always remember what you have done. And maybe you're in the state right now of being discouraged and your passion is not there. Let me just tell you right now, the Lord has Take noted all the things that you have done for him. And he will reward you for what you have done. Amen? And, 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 and your passion before God and your heart to help and being part of this house, God will never forget that. Amen? Father God, I pray. For every single person who are here in front. I thank you for the grace of God abounding. The strength of God. The peace of God. The joy of the Lord. The joy of salvation. And I speak peace over you in the name of Jesus. And whatever discouragement that you are facing right now, God is restoring that strength. And I'm telling you right now, you will overcome. You will see the victory. You will see the grace of God. You will see the power of the Lord operating. And even at this very moment, there is a divine intervention that is happening over your situation you may not see it right now you may not feel it right now but god is doing something in your situation so don't lose heart don't be discouraged let the courage of the spirit of god be upon you for god 
is about to show His power and His grace in your situation. So I thank you, Lord, for every single person here. I thank you for releasing them from any burdens in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you have said in your word, Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Those of you who are heavily laden and heavily burdened, I thank you for rest. So I receive that rest right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for restoration of strength. I thank you for restoration of hope. I thank you for restoration of passion and joy. And thank you, God, that there is that peace that surpasses all understanding. And that will guard their hearts and their mind. I speak that over them. And I say, be encouraged and be strengthened. The Lord is with you and He will never leave you. In the name of Jesus, and everybody will say, Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Do not lose heart. Be encouraged. God is with you and He will be for you. So if you are experiencing discouragement in life, you just believe God, you just trust the Lord, and continue to be planted in the house of God, that a family of God that will encourage you and that will support you, will pray for you. And I believe that as you journey in life, all will be well, and, and the goodness of God will, will overflow in your life. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.